Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to another Pixel for Life video tutorial. Today we are going to be creating a PFL cube thingamabobber, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, we're going to be starting off in Illustrator because it's easier to get a quick cube shape in there because uh, it has a 3D effect panel and I don't have that in my basic Photoshop. So I start off by making a simple cube or a square and then just give it a dark gray color, it doesn't really matter at all. Then go to Effect, 3D, and Extrude and Bevel. And here, I mess with some settings to get the desired shape that I want. Uh, you don't have to do it exactly like me. And if you don't have Illustrator, I will be providing this cube image that I used. So you can still follow along. I sped, I sped this part up because I was just tinkering with the different uh, settings and messing with the perspective as well. Because without the perspective, it gave its weird, flat-looking appearance. So once I did that, I was pretty happy with the outcome. Now that we're done with the shape, I'm going to just grab a quick screenshot by doing Command, Shift, and 4. And that will save it to my desktop. Now I'm going to close Illustrator. not going to save it because I don't need that file again. Open up Photoshop and create a new document with just some basic settings. One, uh, 1280 by 124. And then we have the image here. I'm just going to scale it up. Don't worry about the pixelated look. It doesn't matter at all because we're going to be tracing over it with the pen tool. So it's going to be vector anyway. So now let's just grab the pen tool, create a new layer. And I'm just going to trace this piece by piece. Just click it for the top one now. And then one more. Oops. Okay. And now I'm going to make a new layer. And we're going to be working on the other side. Just doing this fa fairly quickly. I mean, it's all straight object or straight lines, so it's not too bad. You can always go back and modify it later, which is what I do. Um, so now we got that. I'm going to change that color a little bit darker so we can see some shading, I guess. Create a new layer and then do this last side over here. Just going to keep these lines straight, just single clicking, no curves at all. Um, and there we go. All right, going to make this one dark as well. Just keeping the the shading that's on the original image. So now I'm going to turn on all these layers, and this is going to allow me to refine the edges. And I want to keep a little bit of white space between each one. So I go to my pointer tool and just going to bring these down uh, just to where I think it looks right. A lot of little tweaking. I'm going to grab all four corners, or well, three corners pretty much, and space them. And you want to keep those two points on the sides about even, and then just scale the top. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it um, does to me. This point right here, uh, I'm going to make it even with the one next to it. There we go. That's looking pretty fancy. I'm going to leave it like that. So now I'm going to create a new layer above everything. Grab my type tool, and just going to type out uh, PFL. P, F, and L, just three letters, one on each side. I'm going to scale it up. And I'm using just a simple Helvetica font and I'm going to bring it over just to get an approximate size of what I want. And you can always change this later. Then you want to right click it and go to convert to shape. And this is going to make it into a vector shape so you can uh, modify each, each different letter. And I'm going to bring them to the sides that I want them on. P on the left, F on the top, and L on the right side very simple and it was a little too small so I'm going to scale it up just a little bit and there we go and I'm going to grab each letter by itself I'm going to right click and let's try perspective uh, it's it's sort of working um, kind of looking weird let's try out distort yeah yeah this is looking better uh, I'm just going to try and line this make this bottom line the same angle as the bottom part of the square and then the top the same angle as the top part of the square and that should come out pretty well that looks good let's do this L shape because I'm not really looking forward to trying with the F because that's kind of weird I'm going to distort it again so it's the same angles as the bottom and the top there we go I'm going to do this side a little bit too 
Just just gotta mess with it till you get the correct angle that you want. You can grab this whole top and just slide it over. That looks good. So now let's try out this F. Again, going to go to distort, grab this bottom corner, line it up. Same with that. There we go. And that's not too bad actually. Um, just gonna mess with these edges a little bit. Try and get it correct. It keeps snapping into place. Um, let's see. That's that's looking good. Let's drag this over a little bit. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm gonna leave it like that. It should be fine. Okay, so now that we have the P, F, and L looking good enough, I'm going to start working on the shading of the sides. I don't want to do anything too fancy. Uh, just something pretty simple. So I'm going, going to lighten this up a little bit. Double click and go to gradient overlay. And just add a quick gradient. Change the blend mode overlay. Um, just, just mess with this. Let's try out radial. Reverse it. So it kind of looks like the corners are shaded. That's not bad. Yeah. Well, let's go with that. That's good enough. Click OK. And... I'm going to duplicate this over to the other side and that's that's probably good enough. And now the top just looks funky so I'm going to double click, go to gradient and let's change this to linear and take off reverse and then just drag it up just a little bit and that, that looks much better. And let's make that slightly darker or hmm, just got to find that good medium. Right in the center is fine. I'm going to lighten this side here and then this side we're going to bring a little bit lighter as well. That looks that looks good enough. And then the font, I'm just going to make that white. And then we're going to do an inner shadow. I want to kind of give it some depth. Um, but actually doing that kind of does it does the wrong angle for everything. So I think I need to separate them all onto their separate layers. So, hmm. Let's uh let's go to our the create a new layer and then go to your shape, your vector shape tool, go to a rectangle, just drag out any shape, uh, do it for two layers, that way we have some blank vector layers, go to the the text layer, copy it, and paste it to this one, and then um, go back, click that F, copy it, go to the top, paste it, and there we go, the letters are all in their own layers, and now we can delete these squares from the layers, we don't need that anymore. Go back to the first layer and delete those shapes or the letters and then make them all white. Simple enough. Not too hard. So now we can go to the blending options and give it its own inner shadow so then the angles are correct. I'm just going to give it some distance. going to keep them pretty hard edges <clears throat> and darken it a little bit. That way it kind of looks like it's sunken into the actual cube. And just mess with it. That looks good kind of want it to stand out so let's try a stroke um, control H to hide the vector outline and uh, it's not looking too good let's try outer glow and that looks better there we go I'm gonna keep that I guess um, inner shadow angle is just a little bit funky there we go negative 21 I guess that's good enough and then let's try darkening up the shape so it doesn't stand out so much um, going to do an outer glow or an inner glow and see if adding some shadow to the inside helps a little bit. Um, just something very subtle. going to lower that opacity way down just to give it some kind of depth. That's good. going to duplicate it over to the P and obviously the inner shadow is wrong so I'm just going to swoop that around to something that I think looks nice. And um, that's good enough. 162 negative. And we have some gaps on the edges, so don't worry about that. We're going to come back and fill those in with the separate layer. Let's just do this top F. Uh, the inner shadow is messed up on that as well, but no big dealio. Um, let's see. I think the depth is a little too much, so I'm going to bring that smaller. Um, that looks good. All right, going to change the font to white. And now we can fill in those white spots that are on the corners of everything. So I'm going to zoom in, grab my pen tool, grab that dark gray color, and just click on this corner to this corner. 
and then close it off. And now grab my direct selection tool and just tweak it a little bit so there's no white spots showing at all. I'm just going to do it really quickly because it's kind of kind of boring to watch. Okay. Now slide on over to the letter P and we will be working on this side here, one right here. Just click on those corners, bring it down. It's good. All right. Um, let's see, it's making new layers for every time I do that, but whatever. Click here, here, down here. There we go. And let's, let's combine these layers here. So I'm going to select this, copy it, bring it here, paste it. Um, select this one, copy it, and paste it, and then delete these top two layers because they're no longer needed. Just duplicates. Looking good. One more letter. Let's do this corner on the F here. So I'm going to select this button in the middle, and that's just going to add it to the current current layer. So click here, here, and close that off. Good job. You guys are following the rules. All right, I'm going to bring that. Um, Bring that over a little bit. The edge was kind of looking weird. And very nice. I think the cube might be a little bit too large, so I'm going to scale it down. Select all these layers, and then because it's a vector, we can just scale without any problems. Um, okay, I might have lied to you. The corners that we made are looking a little funky, so I think we need to go and tweak that. Um, first, this L is getting kind of dark, so I made it pure white instead of an off gray. Um, let's see, zoom on in, and let's grab this corner piece right there, and let's just straighten that up, get rid of that white spot. The scaling kind of messed it up a little bit. So, let's see. Kind of hard to work on top of another vector layer, because if you don't click correctly, it uh, selects the wrong layer. So I like that. <laughs> a little annoying. Looks like our color might be off a little bit, but we'll fix that later. Just going to slide these over, fill in that white spot, alrighty, and then one more over here on the F, not too bad. Um, slide that down, okay, very good. Zoom out and let's see what that looks like, not too bad. I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to start working on the, uh, the shadow. I'm going to draw an ellipse tool over here, an elliptical object. And don't click shift or else it becomes weird. Alright, I'm going to make it a, a dark dark gray like that and go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Um, actually, first I'm going to convert it to a smart object and then do a Gaussian blur. Uh, bring up that radi radius. Uh, 8.6 works out pretty nicely. I'll lower the opacity quite a bit. And then I'm going to grab my marquee tool my elliptical marquee tool and just draw it like a half moon shape here or turn into about a half moon shape. Just line it up and then holding down option I believe it is and click this mask tool and it'll mask off what you have selected. Lower that opacity. Uh, it's going to take a couple layers to create the shape that I have in my mind. I'm going to grab my pen tool and just draw out a box behind it like this. Uh, there we go. Double click it, make it another dark gray. Then let's do a gradient overlay. Remove the fill so we don't see that in the background. I'm going to select here and go from a uh, black to transparent. So change that to black, click OK, and then reverse it. Uh, it's not quite getting the look that I'm after. Lower this opacity, let's see. Um, uh, still not what I'm after. Let's let's create one more layer to make it a little bit darker directly underneath the box. So draw this out. Uh, click click. I'm going to um, uh, let's see. Let's remove this gradient overlay and just try and make it black. So close that. Make it black. Click OK. And remember to put put up your fill. Go to uh, Gaussian blur. Just click OK, and then just bring out that blur. And that that's looking pretty good. I'm liking that. Now I'm going to blur this layer that we just created uh, a second ago, just to make it less harsh on the edges. That looks good. I'm liking that. That's 
that's good enough for me. Uh, you can kind of see the shadow behind that cube in that white spot. So let's just make a quick selection. I'm going to select that area here. All right. Select and then just click delete. Then go to the next layer and click delete. Perfect. There we go. So now it's not showing through anymore. Now let's uh, create a new layer. Go to your type tool and just add some funky text right here. Bring down our uh, text size. And then just write pixel for life. You can write that too. Uh, it's sort of required, but all right, never mind. You can put whatever you want. I'm just going to change that color so it matches a bit better. And there we go. That's going to finish this off. Be sure to connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, all that usual stuff. So thanks for watching, and see you next time.